Hi, Chem students. Welcome to a tutorial over complex unit conversions. Guess what we're going to use to do those complex unit conversions? Dimensional analysis. Woohoo! If you haven't watched the last video over dimensional analysis, this video will make absolutely no sense. So make sure to go back and master dimensional analysis first. So a complex unit is one that has both a numerator and a denominator. In the last video, our givens only had a numerator. So what does one of those complex units look like? So for example, a unit for density is grams per milliliter. To convert complex units, just tackle the units one at a time, but in the same problem. So here's an example. Convert 15 miles per gallon to kilometers per liter. So we are converting from customary to metric units. Please use your reference sheet. You do not need to memorize all of these. You get to use your reference sheet. Since I'm using dimensional analysis, I need a given, I have an unknown, and I'm going to use conversion factors to connect the two. So this, the one with the number, is my given. This is my unknown. And these, my friends, are our fun conversion factors. We're going to choose a couple of them to get us from miles per gallon to kilometers per liter. So I start, as always, with my given. It's 15 miles per one gallon. And I need to find a conversion factor that is going to change one of these units. We're going to change one at a time. I'm going to start with the distance unit. So I'm going to try to get my miles to kilometers first. So I can find a conversion factor right here that will do that for me. One mile equals 1.609 kilometers. So the one mile goes on the bottom. The 1.609 kilometers goes on top. It has to go on the bottom so that miles cancel. Well, now I have one unit that I want, which is the kilometer. But if I solved here, I would have kilometers per gallon. That doesn't even make sense. So I need to go an extra step, converting gallons into liters. So finding that conversion factor, it is right here. One gallon equals 3.785 liters. Well, if you look, my gallon is on the bottom. In order for gallons to cancel, I'm going to have to put the one gallon on top. Remember, units cancel diagonally. So this is the first time we're seeing this. So one gallon goes on top, 3.785 liters goes on bottom, and my units cancel diagonally. So when I solve this, I'm going to multiply across the top. So 15 times 1.609 times 1. And that gives me 24.135 kilometers. Notice kilometer is the only unit that has not canceled on the top. On the bottom, I'm going to multiply 1 times 1 times 3.785, and I get 3.785. Five. Notice that liter is the only unit that hasn't canceled, which is good. These are the units I need. They are the units of my unknown. So I'm going to divide these, and I get 6.3764 blah, 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 kilometers per liter. Sig figs, my friends. You have to use sig figs. So if we look at the given, the given is 15 miles. This is two significant figures. All of my conversion factors are infinite, so I'm going to round to that 15 miles per gallon. So I need two sig figs in my answer. So 6.3 is significant. I look at the number behind it. It's greater than 5, so it rounds up. My final answer is 6.4 kilometers per liter. Let's try another one. In my second example, I'm going to convert 65 miles per hour to meters per second. Again, I don't have all these conversion factors memorized, so I'm going to use my reference list. My given is the one that has the number. My unknown is just a unit here. So I'm going from miles per hour to meters per second, one unit at a time. Start with 65 miles over one hour. So this is going to take a lot more conversion factors. Let's try to deal with those miles and get them to meters. So these are distance units. I know that one mile equals 1.609 kilometers, same conversion factor that I used before. This is going to get me a step closer to meters because it at least switches 
from the customary units to the metric system. So the one mile goes on bottom, so miles can cancel. 1.609 kilometers goes on top. So at least I'm in the metric system now, but I don't want kilometers. I want meters. Well, because I know King Henry and the metric scale, I know how kilometers and meters are related. King Henry danced before drinking chocolate milk. For every one kilometer, I have one, two, three, one thousand meters. The one kilometer goes on the bottom, the 1,000 meters goes on top, so that kilometers can cancel. So I at least have one good unit. I have meters. Let's keep going. Now I'm going to tackle the time units. I need to go from hours to seconds. So in my mind, if I'm starting with hours, I know that one hour is equal 60 minutes. It doesn't get me to seconds, but I don't know how hours and seconds are directly related. So this is going to take me a couple of conversion factors. My first one is going to be for every one hour, I have 60 minutes. So why did hours go on the top? Because they have to cancel diagonally. Hours were on the bottom originally, so they have to be on the top now. Well, now I need to cancel minutes. So minutes are going to go on the top one minute and 60 seconds will go on the bottom. Minutes cancel and I have the next unit that I want which is seconds. So if you can see I've got meters per second which makes me happy because that's what I wanted. So I multiply everything across the top I get a really big number 104,585 meters I multiply everything on the bottom and I get 3,600 seconds. I divide that in my calculator to get a final answer of 29 meters per second. Yes, sig figs do matter, so I want to double check that. My given has two sig figs, so my answer needs two sig figs because all of my conversion factors are infinite. Example 3 says convert 0.78 grams per milliliter to pounds per gallon. I encourage you to try this on your own. We will check it tomorrow in class to make sure you're on the right track. There's one last problem I'm going to work in this video, and it's using density as a conversion factor. Since density relates an object's mass to its volume, density can be used as a conversion factor to convert between mass and volume of a substance. Just remember, you want to start with the given measurement this is either going to be mass or volume, then you're going to use density as a conversion factor. And remember that you may have to make some other conversions before and or after you use the density conversion. So here's our example. If a liquid has a density of 1.17 grams per cubic centimeter, how many liters of the liquid have a mass of 3.75 kilograms? So we know we're going to use density as a conversion factor. So I always like to label everything in the problem. The 3.75 kilograms has to be my given, and it's asking us to solve for how many liters. So I know that liters is my unknown. So I'm starting here with 3.75 kilograms, and I need to use a conversion factor that is in grams. So I can't use it right away. I need to go from kilograms to grams first. As we know, for every one kilogram, there are 1,000 grams. So again, kilograms go on the bottom so that those units can cancel. Well, I now am dealing with grams. So yay, I can use my density conversion factor. The 1.17 grams will go on the bottom. The 1 centimeter cubed will go on top so that grams can cancel out. I'm trying to get all the way to liters. Well, I'm in centimeters cubed, so at least I'm in units of volume. What I do know is that in 1,000 centimeters cubed, that's the same as one liter. Remember that a centimeter cubed is the same thing as a milliliter. So since I know 1,000 milliliters equals a liter, 1,000 centimeters cubed equals a liter. Aha. So 
or canceling centimeters cubed, and I have the unit I want, which is liters. When I multiply everything across the top and divide by everything on the bottom, I'm going to get an answer of 3.205 blah 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 liters. I need to check for sig sig. So since my given had three significant figures, my answer needs to have three significant figures. The first three digits are significant. The fourth one is a five, so it rounds up to 3.21 liters with three sig figs. I hope you found this lesson over complex unit conversions to be helpful. This does conclude our measurement series. I will see you in class for more practice.